This lab houses a fashion scientist who uses Petri dishes to make colouring clothing more environmentally friendly. This could be the future of fashion and it smells like beetroot. These beautiful designs were created by bacterial activity. No chemicals required. So how did you come across using bacteria to dye clothing? So when I was studying uh, material features at St. St. Martin's, um, I met Professor John Ward here at UCL, um, and he introduced me to a bacterium called Streptomyces sedicolor. Uh, depending on how it's grown, where it's grown, the pH of that environment, uh, we can produce um, something like a navy blue, uh, bright pink, and so we use all of these um, conditions as a design toolkit to influence um, our patterns and our outcomes on the textile. The bacterium ferments in a small amount of sugar solution, which produces pigment directly onto fabric as the colony of microorganisms grow. Like a brewery with yeast, Natsai engineers the growing conditions to produce different varieties of colour. I'm really interested in how technology is changing how we design and fabricate our environments, and especially in the context of climate change uh, and uh, the source of our resources and the impact that they have on the environment. So um, the imperative for us right now is to try to find ways to um, change the way in which we process and manufacture textiles, reduce water use, um, do away with the need for chemicals at the beginning, at the end of the stage. The process is simple enough that even I could get a start on creating my own microscopic civilization. There you go. So satisfying. <laughs> okay, and then that's you. Wow. There you go, my first. What would this be? A kind of culture? It's a cell culture. So we're going to ferment this now for approximately seven days. All right and we should, at the end of it, have something that looks a little bit more like this. It's a slow and thoughtful process. It takes a week for the bacteria to transform plain fabric into a kaleidoscope of colours, and it works on a small scale. I think the challenges are to then take it from a lab scale and then develop that into uh, really large-scale processes that both work efficiently but also at the right kind of cost. As well as these unique organic patterns, the technique can also block dye fabric a uniform colour. But could these tiny microorganisms make a big enough impact on an industrial level? I am all for um, the innovative um, element that we're exploring here. I think it's vital, it's crucial, but it has to happen in parallel with um, behaviour change. Uh, should we be consuming as much as we are consuming? Perhaps not. So I think for, for us it's very much a two-pronged approach. And this might help the fashion industry start to get a bit more down to earth.